Hello people, <laughs> well, how about this? I'm back. Who on earth saw this coming? But I'm very, very happy to be back making YouTube content once again on my favourite game in the world, Football Manager. And well, just to ease myself back into things, we are starting a short-term challenge here today as we are taking over Everton Football Club like I showed you in the intro. It's not gone very well for old Frankie Lampard, has it? And, well, as bad as it's gone for Frank Lampard in real life, it's gone even worse on FM in this particular save. Because, as you can see, it's the 28th of December 2022 in-game, and Everton are bottom of the Premier League. And not only are they bottom of the Premier League, they are bottom and they have only won one game all season, 16 games played, one game won, five draws, 10 defeats, only scored eight goals. So, <laughs> wow, it has gone terribly. Even Bournemouth are ahead of us. Even Nottingham Forest are ahead of us. So, yeah, quite the challenge I've got to turn this around at. Everton Football Club and to get this team which has not been relegated since 1955. Wow! As a West Ham fan, I'd love to be able to say that about my team, but Everton have not been relegated since 1955 and I don't want to be the one to take them down. So, yeah, that is the challenge we have got ahead of us and just to make things a little bit more interesting for myself. Just mentioned I'm a West Ham fan. First game today is against, you guessed it, West Ham United. And, well, West Ham are seventh in the table. But I don't know if anybody else is noticing this. It seems that no matter what West Ham United do, they sack David Moyes around the end of November. And I don't know why that is because, well... Considering how our season's gone in real life, I'd love a seventh place in the league right now. And, well, you can see as well that the man who has taken over from David Moyes is the current Celtic manager, Ange Postikoglu. That's, that's pronounced correctly. That is definitely correct. Don't get in the comments and tell me that's wrong. Because, well, it's right. I'm telling you, it's right. And so, yeah... But rather interestingly, he's been in the job over a month. I've been in the job just about a month. And, well, this is our first Premier League game for either team, for either manager even. So, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how both of us are going to get on with the new managers in the new teams. And we are just entering January. So you might be thinking, Spen, you're going to be all right. You can go into January. You can spend loads of money and you can get Everton out of this. Well, let me show you. No. We have £2 million in the transfer budget. We are currently a hundred and something grand over the wage budget. And we're only getting 50% of any transfer revenue. So, yeah. Overall balance, four million in the bank. So, that's not great for a Premier League team, is it? And if you look at the projections, 25 million in the red, 36 million in the red after two seasons, and almost 50 million after three seasons, if things continue how they are. So, I really need to turn this team around, don't I? I really, really need to turn this team around. And so, to do that, I have absolutely gutted the staff. 
like I say, I'm, I've been in a job about a month, but because there wasn't any games, I gave myself a little three-week holiday before I took over. So I only came back about a week and a half or so ago. And since then, I have completely gutted the staff. We don't have an assistant manager as of right now. We've only got two coaches, one performance analyst, uh, no chief scouts, and only two proper scouts, one recruitment analyst, and what else have I got it out? I think I got rid of one, one of the physios as well. And a couple of the sports scientists. They are all in the process of being replaced, of being upgraded. Because when I walked into the club, most of them were blooming awful. So, yeah, it was at the point where nobody was better than paying them idiots a load of money. So, yeah, that is the first thing that I'm taking care of. Hopefully, by episode two, we will have that all sorted and I'll be able to tell you about the upgrades to the staff we have made. And so, without any more further ado, I don't think there's much more to be talking about. Oh, actually, before we do get into the teams for today's game, one, one, staff, I, one staff member I have brought in, the absolute nutty mental Scotsman Gordon Strachan. I was looking for a new technical director. And uh, well, <laughs> when he popped his name in the door and said, Hello, I would like to be your technical director, please. I'm not quite sure what that accent was. I don't think that was Scottish. If you've got any idea what that accent was, get in get in the get in the chat, get in the comments. But yeah, anyway, Gordon Strachan walked in the door and he said he wants the job. So, well, you don't say no to Gordon Strachan, do you? The man is an absolute legend. I remember him just about ending his career as I was just getting into football and watching him play for Leeds United. Even at that point, he was so good. And then he was a decent little manager. I liked him to, around the end of the 90s and the early 2000s and that. And so I like his personality. I've got him in the door. Happy days. And so... Yeah, I think into the team for today's first game against West Ham United, where we are indeed away at the London Stadium. So let's get into it. We're going with a 4-2-4, which for a team bottom of the league only scored eight goals all season, going away to a fairly decent informed West Ham side you might think is a little bit mental, a little bit ambitious, but I've been through the assistant report. I'm taking this seriously. That's how seriously I'm taking it. I've gone into the assistant report and I've had a look. And the two players who my assistant report highlighted for this game, how have I got an assistant report? I've just thought of that. I've not got an assistant manager. How have I got an assistant report on this game? Interesting. That's something for me to worry about next time. But anyway, the two people that was highlighted in that report are Yeri Mina and, um, uh, what's his name? Idrissa Gay. So, uh, Mina, he was highlighted because he could help us from deep, apparently. And Idrissa Gay, his work rate and his ability just to run around all day long was highlighted as of something that might be able to put West Ham United off their stride. And so, anyway, yep, we're going with 4-2-4, Pickford in goal of course, because well, we've got nobody else who's any decent, and well he's still England's number one so you don't really turn down England's number one do you? But anyway, Pickford in goal Mikalenko, Tarkowski Mina and Godfrey are our back four, and you'll notice I've got the fullbacks both on defend, that's just because like I say we've not been in the best of form, I really want to try and limit the amount of attacking opportunities that West Ham have to maybe get in behind behind our defensive line so hoping to see how that that gets on in today's game and then in the midfield it is gay alongside James Garner and James Garner is not anybody's first choice for deep line playmaker in this club I've asked a lot of the staff members and well none of them said put James Garner in but I like James Garner's attributes I like what he does because if you go deep line playmaker and you go and support 14 first touch, 15 passing, which is really important. Technique 14, 16 teamwork, uh, 16 determination, 14 comp composer, 16 stamina as well, 15 natural fitness, but also his player traits, tries long range passes and suits from distance. 
which I know he doesn't have the best long shots, 13. It's not terrible. It's not an awful uh, long-range attribute. And I'm thinking, with the long-range passes as well, he can ping the ball forward to our front two, Morpai and Calvert-Lewin. And Calvert-Lewin, of course, being the big giant man that he is, he can maybe nod down some of the passes. Well, I say giant man. He seems taller. He seems taller in real life. How is he only six foot two? That's the same height as me. And, well, I, I don't think I'd be considered like a target forward for a Premier League club just because of my height. But, okay. I honestly thought he was six foot four, six foot five. But, oh, well, I'm wrong. But anyway, James Garner can ping his long balls forward to Calvert-Lewin and he can then get them back down to Neil Morpai. And then, as well, as well, of course, on the wings, we've got Damari Gwai and Alex Iwobi. And then, just a little side note, the one game Everton did win this season, it was against Brighton. And it was against Brighton. It was a 2-0 win, and they both scored as Everton went with a 4-4-2 diamond narrow in that game. So, this one, not overly different to that particular formation, but I still think... I think this is the way to go. I definitely think two strikers up front. And speaking of player traits, this is how seriously I'm taking it. I don't normally look at player traits or stat or anything like that, to be quite honest. But I like Neil Morpai's traits. Places shots, winds up opponents, but more importantly, comes deep to get the ball and gets the crowd going. We're in a relegation scrap. We need the fans with us. So hopefully, more pie can help us with that. And obviously, Calvert-Lewin as well. He has the one player trait of knocking a ball past opponents. And so, yep, with all that said, and well, that's a, that's a bit of a concern actually. Man United won him. Tottenham won him. West Ham won him. We'd take him in real life. And uh, Bayern Munich won him. So, not that I want to get rid of him, but if Bayern Munich fancy ponying up 50, 60 million quid, uh, I would take that. For any of the other teams, it would have to be 80, because I don't want him scoring against us. But anyway, now, now, without any further hold-ups, let's go and get into this first game of my time in charge of Everton, away to West Ham United. <laughs> Here's the West Ham United lineup who are going to be taking us on today. They've got Fabianski in goal, Soufal, Zuma, Ogbonna and Cresswell are their back four. And it looks like they're going with a 4-2-3-1 as they've got Sutek and Rice in the centre of the pitch. And then it's Ben Rama, Paqueta, Corne, who we've not seen too much of IRL in a West Ham shirt. And then Skamaka is up front. Hopefully we can get a result. Hopefully we can get a good start as we do look to start our challenge of keeping Everton in the Premier League. Let's go pump the fists and let's go. I think it's time we set a few people up. A lot of them are inspired or motivated. Very, very happy with that. And then, as always, prediction time, as I do like to do here on the channel. I'm going to go 2-0 us. I quite fancy us. 2-0 us. Come on, you toffees. Three minutes into the game and we've got the first highlight. Dominic Calvert-Lewin coming deep to pick it up off a throw-in. And now it's Mikhelenko to James Garner. He goes to Neil Morpai, who indeed, as his trait indicated, he has come deep. And we've played a ball over the top. And Calvert-Lewin, what are you doing? I could have done better than that effort. My God, man. Half an hour in now, and we've finally got another highlight. It's West Ham United coming forward. Corne down the left-hand side. And Corne loses it, but he wins it back immediately. And Skamaka with the header. And he's headed it. And Pickford has just dropped it at his feet. What are you doing? Oh, that is Pickford's little T-Rex arms playing up again. Oh, my God. Gosh. Oh, normally I'd be over the moon with Skamaka scoring a goal like that. But not today as well. Pickford should have caught that. Answers, why has he dropped that ball? Why has he dropped that ball? A minute before half time, and it's Aaron Cresswell now with a free kick from the left-hand side. And Zuma with the header and it's 2-0. 
Oh, welcome back to FM Spin. Oh, my days. That was much too easy. I've worked on the set pieces. I've actually done set pieces before this game. That's how serious I'm taking this save. And it still hasn't worked. And well, talking of things not working, look at those stats. That's hilariously bad. Oh my gosh, West Ham, 16 shots, 7 on target, XG of 1.31. Us, 3 shots, none on target, XG of 0.38. Yeah, I'll be back with you in a minute when I've figured out what I'm going to change to try and turn this around. Okay, so I just realised I didn't go through the tactics in depth before the game. So, well, this is what we're going with now. We're sticking with the 4-2-4. I still have hope for that, but we're now going more di slightly more direct passing, higher tempo, or slightly higher tempo anyway, uh, hit early crosses. We're now trying to play the ball down the left just to see if that can get us any kind of joy. We're distributing the ball to the flanks and we're going very high intensity, counter press, counter when we do have the ball and distribute quickly. And then when we're out of possession, we're now going high press, get stuck in more often, uh, step up more, and yeah, trap outside and stop crosses. And so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that might get us back into this. I'm going to give it 10 minutes and then uh, panic and probably go with something very, very different just to try and get us back into the game if we haven't scored by the hour mark. Okay, 65 minutes in. We've not improved our XG. We've not had any more shots, I believe. We've certainly not had any more highlights. So, yeah, answers on a postcard as to how you get us back into this. I think option one, Dwight McNeil is going to come on for Damari Gray. So, that has happened. And now, what else? What else have we really got that we can bring on? What can Onana do? Oh, Nana, oh, Nana, what can oh, Nana do? He, he can play as a Mazala or an advanced playmaker. We're bringing him on for Ghana. There might be a reason none of my staff really wanted Ghana to be a deep-lying playmaker. I think I'm seeing it now because... Uh, what was his rating? 6.5. Yep, nobody in this team is over a 6.7, which is Ben Godfrey, our right-back. Which, yeah... <laughs> it's not ideal. Uh, who else? Do we have anybody else we can bring on? What about Gordon? He also plays on the left. Although he is happy on the right as well. Mm. I like Iwobi. I do like Iwobi, on, especially on FM. So I'm going to leave him on. Well, this just shows you the problem we're in. We've got nobody off the bench who can come on and change this. So, yeah. Let's, let's change Calvert-Lewin to a target forward. And let's go more pie as a pressing forward for the last half hour and just see what that can do. 73 minutes in, we finally have another highlight. Iwobi, he's trying to beat Cresswell. He's crossed it into the box. McNeil with a header. I am a tactical genius. Dwight McNeil, with possibly his first touch of the game, has scored his first goal for us. And we are back in this game of football with 15 minutes left to play. Could we be seeing another West Ham meltdown? Another West Ham capitulation? As that was a beautiful cross from Iwobi, I knew I was right to leave him on the pitch. As all oh well, the highlights keep on coming now. Calvert-Lewin with the ball. And he's played it back to Mikalenko. Inside to Onana. And Onana... He might have space here. He's broke into the box. Oh, Nana's in. And oh, I thought we was level. I really, really thought we was level there, people. And well, the highlights really are keeping on coming. We're in London. And it's like the old proverbial London buses. You wait ages for a highlight. And then two or three come along at once. As now Onana's played the ball from deep. He's got it to McNeil. McNeil cuts it inside and Calvert-Lewin's in space. And Calvert-Lewin has had another awful effort. Is he trying to get himself sold? 
Oh, oh, I was just about to give up on the game. But now we're in injury time. We've had a corner ball. It's been headed away. And Paqueta tries to win the ball back, but doesn't. And now it's more pie with it. He's crossed it in. Calvert-Lewin. Dominic Calvert-Lewin with the equaliser in the 90th minute. And wow, what a turnaround this is from 15 minutes ago when I was giving up on this game of football. And well, we are right back in this. Could we even win it by the end of the game? We've got two minutes to score another one. Oh? This, this is end of game, isn't it? This is end of game highlight. I shouldn't be getting too excited. Corne does have the ball. He's gone all the way back to the Polish Fabianski. And Lucas Fabianski just plays it into the centre of the park to Socek. And Socek back to the German, Tilo Kura. Forward to the little Argentinian, my man, Cross Lanzini. He's played it to Ben Rama. Socek downs. Downs has played it in. Oh, no. Emerson Wales come back. And no! 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 How? How has that happened? We have lost this in the 93rd minute. Emerson with a great little low cross, which Skamaka was never going to miss. Oh. Oh, my gosh, people. I hope you enjoyed that game of football. Welcome back to YouTube. You wait eight or nine months for a tailor-made gaming episode and... I bring you the drama. I bring you the drama, don't I? Skamaka with two. Zuma with the other one for the hammers. And I really thought we'd nicked a point. Ah, oh, it's gutting. 25 shots. West Ham had 2R10. 11 on target, 2R5. An XG of 2.49 for West Ham to R1.85. Well, work to do. Definitely, definitely work to do, people. As uh, let's go, hands on hips. Uh, you did yourself proud. Yep, everybody is happy with that. And so I'll be back with you in a second to find out where we're going to come back for our next episode. Well, that result leaves us rooted to the bottom of the table, still on eight points. Now from 17 games, we're eight points behind Forest and Safety. We need to turn this around soon. But yeah, let's see. When are we going to come back? Who have we got coming up after New Year? We've got Wolves in the Cup, Villa and Southampton. Only two Premier League games in January. Okay. Uh, ooh. Might come back for Villa. I think we come back for Aston Villa. So I can tell you what, if any, deals we have done in January. So, yep, guys. That's where we're going to leave it for today. I know this is the wrong time to be doing it because you're supposed to do this in the middle of videos these days. But first episode of a new series, first video in best part of a year. So please do like the video. It really will help the series out. Or series out. It will help the channel out. And also, as well as that, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Now I'm back on this YouTube thing. I want to get to, what is it, 700 subs? I think it's trying to, I think it is, I'm trying to get to now. So please do help me get there as soon as possible. And yep, thank you all so much for watching. I shall see you next time for Aston Villa away. Be seeing you.